Leia Healthcare. It's good to live. Proud sponsor of the Real Health Podcast with Carl Henry. Hello and welcome to Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. Folks, on this week's show, I'll be chatting about the six foundations of fat loss. A personal trainer, one of Ireland's top online coaches and podcast host, Larry Doyle. He's got some great simple tips to boost your fat loss and improve your mood, your energy and your sex life too. Larry, a very big welcome to the show. How's it going? Carl, thank you very much. It's a, a pleasure to be on. I'm looking forward. I love bringing trainers on to chat all things. It's like a PT convention. It's great crack. I love bringing people on to pick their brains on the kind of stuff that they, that they do. Before we get started with that, tell me about your own story. I know you've moved from Dublin down to Wexford. Uh, change in life. Online is the kind of before COVID kicked in, you were one of the online coaches be- way before all of that. So give us a bit, a bit of background about yourself. I guess I, I moved to Dublin from Wexford originally, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm a Wexford boy uh, in the sunny southeast, but uh, I've been working in the industry for probably 17 years now. Every time I come back to it, it's a little bit grayer, a little bit further in the distance each time, but um, progressed through the career, kind of normal progression enough, leisure centers, life garden, gym instruction, gently easing my way in, ditching the aerobics and stuff like that on the way, and then moving more into kind of the personal training realm. Uh, moved up to B- Dublin about seven, eight years ago, uh, got involved in a pretty high level elite studio there working as a one on one PT, uh, kind of gradually progressed then as it naturally does kind of been to being more self employed and kind of pushing out towards social media and, and whatnot as well and it's kind of led us back to where we are now in terms of our uh, natural progression back to Wexford uh, thankfully before all the lockdown and madness came in as well too but it's uh, yeah it's, it's been an interesting journey over the last 17 years. And it's a job that you love. It's a career that you love. Uh, I follow you on Instagram. I have for a long time and you absolutely love what you do. Yeah, no, it's it, like you have to be you have to be pretty passionate about this. Like and there is this allure of being a coach that it's a very easy lifestyle. And, and you'll know yourself what you deal with on a day to day basis. It's not as straightforward as just sets, reps and macros and telling people five more and all this jazz. There is a lot that comes with it. But when you can get, you know, a lot of fulfillment back from the actual job and the role and changing people's lives, it's it's a huge one. And let's chat about the six foundations for fat loss. So fat loss is a really important thing. I think as a nation, we've become far more aware of, you know, it's not about weight, it's about muscle, and it's about fat. And when you're looking to lose weight, fat loss is what you're looking to lose. What are the six foundations and why are they really important? For the, the pivotal word is foundation because you're looking to build a mansion. And if you haven't got the foundation in place, you can only hold so much structure on top, right? So when we look at these, we need to make sure that you've got these six elements in. And it's something we find is crucial. And you're looking at your food and fuel. You're looking at your sleep and recovery. You're looking at your stress management. You're looking at digestion. You're looking at your exercise and movement as well. And then also your mental well-being. Now, you can't go down huge rabbit holes in all of those. You've got to make sure, I guess, if you were to imagine it like a, like a pie chart and you're trying to fill out the graph as much as physically possible with those six, they're never going to be perfect. But if you can have those in a better place, obviously you're going to have greater adherence. You're going to have greater control over the actual outcome that you're looking for with your fat loss. Because, you know, when we're talking about fat loss, it's calorie deficit. That's all you're going to get thrown back at the moment. And it's a big buzzword, but calorie deficit is fine but if you can't keep the calorie deficit if you can't maintain it if you can't sustain it then your fat loss suffers and it's not as simple as physiology right so when we go down that route and you know everyone wants to get technical it's just well eat less move more it's not right you got to look at how you can actually sustain that and when we can put in those different practices with those six foundations now you get lasting success now you get that journey that If you look at uh, with the the instant gratification of everything now, it's before and afters. And what we're looking for is the after after, right? So it's it's what happens after that journey that they've lost the fat, they've lost weight, but then do they rebound? Do they go back to square one? And if you haven't got that structure in place, if you haven't got those foundations in place, you're going to struggle massively. And And it's it's really important to tell people, you know, there is no magic quick fix. And people who listen to my show over the course of the last three years, we don't, bring people on chatting quick fixes and nonsense because we don't believe in it. It's about long-term health and simple changes. And again, you look at Instagram, people are promoting rapid stuff all the time, super low calorie deficit diets. It is hard to do. It does take time and it does take hard work. And it's really important to state that at the beginning, if it looks too easy or someone's promoting it, that it looks too easy. Generally it's not real and it's not going to work for the long term. Well, 
you know, people are trying to reinvent the wheel. They're trying to, you know, sexify the whole thing. They're trying to really jazz it up. You can't, it's, it's very simple. And unfortunately, like with anything, not just health and fitness, it's the basics that work because they're the basics and they've been proven time and time again. Now, there's only so many ways that, you know, we can make sleep sound sexy. There's only so many ways that you can make a salad sound sexy. You know what I mean? There's, <laughs> and, and I get it, like, and, and I would have been in the, a, a fairly fixed mindset with my earlier days, right? And this is where the evolution over the 17 years has come that I would have been, yes, you have to strength train and you have to do your heavy deadlifts and squats and bench press and you have to, you know, really track your calories tightly. I don't care what people do so long as it gets them to the end goal and they're in safe and happy positions at the end and they can sustain it. So if that means going out in your garden and dancing in a hula hoop and you feel better doing it, <laughs> have at it, you know, because this is this is how we want people to actually enjoy it rather than you saying, I'm on Larry's program and you know what, I just hate squats and uh, I don't want to do them anymore. It's like, cool, don't do them. You know, and, and this is where we're progressing a lot more and trying to keep the basics in there's a little bit of wants and needs yes people want to have that but they need to have you know that little element of control and once we can put those in you find there's a far greater outcome and a result from the whole process i think there's two things you really touched on there one is enjoyment so whatever it is you, however you live you've got to enjoy it and that's really important for long-term health but two is experience and where you take your advice you know, it, I think we're all like that in the first year or two of your PT career. You, you find things, you're really passionate about it, and it's very kind of, you know, it's very uh, succinct. But with age and as you gain more experience, you do relax a little bit more and you kind of you have a wider view of the world and view of, of life as opposed to being overly strict on one specific thing. So that experience is really important. When you enter the industry or when someone enters the industry, they're entering with only their own experience, which is very limited. And as you start to see more bodies, as you start to see more people, as you see, start to see more walks of life, now you start to get this appreciation because generally as a trainer, we come in as people who are really interested and really invested in health. The people you're dealing with are not, right? And they don't really care about, you know, going into a squat rack and going nuts and, you know, really weighing and measuring out their food. They want to have that element of enjoyment, but still factor in their life, still factor in their weekends, still factor in the wine with the girls or whatever it may be. And as you gain that experience, you kind of realize people don't really care about that really technical advanced method. They just want something that they can enjoy and actually put in and factor into their life as opposed to factoring their life into it, right? And that's the big thing. Okay, let's get cracking. So people are tuning in. They want to learn how to lose body fat. We're going to tell them. So we're going to kick it off with sleep. The key pillar for any wellness, whether it's fat loss or weight loss or general health, it all has to begin with sleep. And people really neglect that. Yeah. And there's a huge focus being brought on sleep now at the moment. And I'm very cautious when I tell people about sleep, because yes, it is the most anabolic thing you can do. It's the most restorative thing you can do but also you can give people a bit of a complex about their sleep and <laughs> you're trying to improve a half an hour, but you end up putting someone into such a routine that they get paranoid and losing five hours sleep because of it. Right? So it's looking at putting in gradual routine and structure. I always go back to the baby. You give a baby a certain sleep routine. You give them their bottle at a certain time. You give their routine, routine, routine. They go down at six, they wake at seven. The, every parent could tell you, could ream it off straight away. What's your own routine? Like, Ah, you know yourself, I'll do it whenever. <laughs> and it, it's, there's no routine. And that baby will thrive in that environment of routine and structure. And I'm not saying you have to set your watch by it and go down at seven o'clock with a bottle every night for your adult who's sleeping. But if you can put some routine in place, if you can put some structure in place, it's going to have profound impacts. And, you know, simple stuff like just removing the technology a little bit. You know, people might see me, I'll have my blue light blockers on and I'll have, you know, dim lights and salt lamps and all this jazz. You don't have to do that. It's like, could you just remove it, put a book in your hand for a little bit more before bed? Could you maybe put the TV on a little bit more of a dimmer uh, brightness? Could you, you know, start to pull your food back a little bit earlier in the evening time? And all these small things, they kind of compound up in the interest and they have a huge return. And it's not till you can get people to actually have a good night's sleep till they realize, holy hell, I've been missing out on this. This is, <laughs> this is the thing. I'm never losing it again. And once you get that initial buy-in, they're going to hang on to it because they will see how valuable it is, right? So if you can just, like, you don't have to get eight hours sleep, 
if you're going from five hours to five and a half hours, you're increasing like that half an hour is an extra three and a half hours per week. So you've increased more than a half an hour, a half night sleep in total. You know, so it's, it's bridging that gap just ever so slightly. But now your your training increases, your performance increases, your recovery, your mood, your energy, your cravings are down and your general outlook and your lack of necessity for stimulants and caffeine and everything else goes down. You have more vitality, you have more energy, you have more, it's the ultimate drug. And if you can improve it, like if you, if, if I was to bottle this, put all those on the label and charge 99.99 for it, it would sell out instantly because people would just be, that, that sounds amazing. It is, and it's actually free, you know? So once you can start people to realize that, it's key. And of course, one of the big mistakes people make is the week, the big lie-in at the weekends, presumably. So it's disrupting that structure, that routine of, you know, whatever your wake-up time is, having a two or three-hour lie-in on a Saturday or a Sunday will throw your routine for the rest of the week. So keeping to that structure, even on the weekends, is really important. To give a number on that, and it usually blows people's minds, Saturday, Sunday is 26% of the week, right? Or 27, I think. When you put Friday in on top of that, it's up to about 42 so now how's your week looking? It's only the weekend. It's okay. Yes, I'm not saying you have to go completely write the book or rewrite the book with your routines again, but try and tighten it up that you've got a window of opportunity for your sleep and just stretch it a little bit. But if you want to make Monday suck less, sort out your weekend routine with your, uh, your sleeping structure. Okay, next uh, foundation is one that's been challenged over the course of the last kind of 12 to 14 months, which is stress. We're all under more stress. We're permanently in that kind of fight or flight because we're in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, and that does affect people's fat loss. So looking at your stress, your stress management strategy is really important. The, uh, the ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? So this is the one we always go back to. Carl, you have a really stressful day. You, you know, something really bad happens to you and you're telling me how bad everything is. And I'm saying, you need some meditation. You need to go do five minutes of breath not going to do it right at all because you're you're too angry you're too frustrated but if you have something in as that daily ounce of prevention now you're able to offset it that little bit more right and stress is going to be there stress is going to be omnipresent you're you're waiting on updates from the government you're waiting on when work can go back you're waiting on when the schools when the gyms and all this jazz and, and everything that's it's a really stressful environment one I would say straight away is reduce your exposure to the stressful things. So instead of adding something in, instead of adding meditation, instead of adding mindfulness, remove the junk that's causing the noise first, right? And, you know, you can limit that with your exposure, with turning off your notifications, with removing the Sky News app from your phone, with doing all these things and whatever it may be that allow you to reduce that stress. And that's going to be absolutely key to the whole process in that. Then putting in that... Like something we look at with a lot of people is hobbies and it's activities and stuff that they're actually doing to, to really detune the brain. Something I've got back into, I used to, because I, the, the fortune of being from Wexford, we've got loads of beautiful rivers and coastline here. So I used to fish an awful lot when I was younger. Now I've got back into fishing in the last few years because being an adult got in the way, right? Then we, we do adult things, you get bills, you get mortgages, you get stress and all that comes with it you don't go back to the things that you used to really enjoy and you kind of overlook those. So now for me, if I get out for a couple of hours onto the river, I'm completely chilled. I'm completely unwound. Not that you have to go do uh, fishing, right? But people may have played an instrument. They may have done something when they were younger. It's pick it back up and actually put that back in. And this is now your five, 10 minutes of headspace. That's my meditation is going out in the river as opposed to someone telling me what to do. I don't respond so well to that. And other people don't as well. There's a bit of friction with meditation. You look like you're the same, right? You're not. I'm exactly, I'm nodding my head because I totally get it. I don't, I don't like being told what to do either. That is absolutely for sure. So it's about finding your de-stress or find what works for you. And I, I, I go with you on that. So mine is like, a, I have a guitar lesson once a week. It's sacrosanct. I always do it. And you know, it, you, you kind of, you just zone out for that period of time. And it's, it is, and it's a, it's a genuine de-stressor. So it's about finding what works for you and reducing your exposure to stress. So reducing your news content or your social media feeds or whatever that may be and controlling your stress a little bit more. Yeah, no, and it's absolutely vital because the amount of return you get on a small investment is profound. And it's just like the sleep. It's a very small nudge. It's a very small, nudge. it doesn't have to be a complete overhaul because people think again, they have to go, you know, climb on the top of a mountain and sing Kumbaya to go meditate. But it's, it's not at all that, you know, it's, it's something that grounds you, whether that's, um, Neve Connolly, our good friend with uh, Transform CBT, her kettle breaths. This was a practice I was already doing until she until she gave it a name. 
Kate thinks that I'm addicted to coffee. I probably am pretty strongly addicted to coffee as every PT is, but I've the whole kit and caboodle for making my coffee. It's a 10 minute meditation for me. I'm smelling, I'm aware, I'm surrounding myself with the aroma and the environment, but I'm actually engaging in the process. I'm not putting my phone in my hand. You'll rarely see me put a picture of it up on Instagram because if you're putting a picture up of your meditation on Instagram, you're probably not meditating so yeah. well. That always cracks you up when people do that. You see, I go do my yoga pose and the phone is out. You're like, no, that you're that just doesn't. Well, no, no, that's just I feel that's so just, disconnected. Doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take it to the third one. Uh, this is really interesting. I think it'll surprise a lot of people, but it's crucial. Is digestion. Hmm. When you're pooping while you're happy, right? <laughs> like it's it's not something people want to talk about. It's like everyone say, oh, and, uh, can you fix my squat form? Can you fix my deadlift technique? And I was like, you know, uh, when you like periods and poop is something that people don't talk about, right? And especially male trainers because, uh, you know, whatever. And these are the things that are going to really transform your life because if you're going around bloated, if you're going around backed up, if you're feeling just stodgy, literally, getting that together uh, without sounding crude on it is going to make a radical difference you're going to be feeling better in your skin you're going to be feeling that little bit sexier you're going to be feeling leaner you're not going to feel your tummy pushing in against your belt or your waistband and this is the stuff you can't see because it's internal and everyone just looks for this external view all the time and they tend to ignore the internal but this is as simple again as and it crosses over into the, the mindfulness or the stress management element element of it if you're eating in a stress state, if you're on the rush, if you're on the go all the time and you're grabbing something off the counter, you've got a, a kid in the other arm and you're trying to wolf it in, your body is in a stress state. It's in fight or flight. You need to shift it into that rest and digest. And I'm not saying you put the kid down and you don't go sit in traffic, but it's put it at a time where it's actually conducive to eat your food, that you can actually chew it, that you can actually process. You can actually, you know, create your own digestive enzymes with that as well, too, and, you know, actually um if we go back to the, the old saying of like your stomach doesn't have teeth right yes it does have acid but at the same point you need to be able to mechanically break down that food because again it, it needs to be processed so we can actually digest it that a little bit more um but then when you look at are people drinking enough fluids right you're coming into the summertime we're all active now we're, we're doing twenty thousand steps a day and everything is great and we're we're sweating more we're losing more with heat and, and exposure to exercise as well if we haven't got sufficient hydration, we're not going to have sufficient bowel movements as well. You know, so it's, it's looking at the environment. Are you very stressed? Are you eating a fiber? Are you drinking enough fluids? Are you doing all these processes? And one we're kind of not famous for, but we put in with a lot of our clients is the poop stool, where you can actually put your feet up, elevate your feet, and now you've got a better bowel movement as well too, right? And I, ha I have one upstairs, I'll be very honest. <laughs> it, it, and everyone should, and it's such a... I get people tagging me in the middle aisle of the time and they're like, oh, look, poop stools, but it's like a child's step or whatever. But yeah. these things are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And it's such an easy, low barrier to entry of, you know, low barrier to exit, I guess you could call it as well. Too. <laughs> but it's, it's such an easy thing to put in place that gets profound return. And again, like this helps massively with your fat loss because now, again, you're feeling better, you're moving better, you're now able to train better you're able to go for a walk because you're not feeling bloated and backed up and foggy and all the things that come with that as well too. And this is where all of these, they all cross over into adherence because now your mood and energy is better as well. So chances are, if your mood is off, adherence is going to be far lower. If your mood is up, adherence is going to be far higher. So it's simple things like, you know, addressing your stress management, addressing your digestion and the sleep and recovery and all these other factors, they all tie in massively. And folks, if you do want to do a bit more research about who have a Google of the Bristol Stool Church, it's fascinating and see where you rate on that church. Eva from Operation Transformation is always chatting about it. You're listening to the latest episode of Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Lay Healthcare. We're chatting all things fat loss with Larry Doyle. Let's take it on to number four, exercise. An obvious thing for fat loss and for general well-being, it is really important. How hard you work is crucial, presumably, irrelevant of what you're doing, whether it's running or weight, the effort level is important. So the World Health Organization, they recommend 150 to 300 minutes per week of exercise. That sounds like an awful lot. It's 20 to 40 minutes a day, which now when you break it down is like, OK, I could do that. I could get out for a brisk walk. I could, you know, go for a stroll. I could get up from my desk and move about. It doesn't have to be all in the one go. Right. So when people think of exercise, they think of immediately what comes into a lot of people's minds is 
crossfit or people in the gym are going nuts and, and running around with barbells and on bikes and you know doing all this super super hard intensive work just get out and move it's, it's a really simple thing and it's, it's incredibly overlooked and again this is where my biases would have changed dramatically um lately i've uh, i bought a skipping rope right i've seen you yeah you're getting uh, good yeah so I'm, I'm a complete robot and it's it's something as well actually it's it's quite humbling because i'm now a white belt in something else in exercise right i'm, I'm not good at it but i'm getting better at it. but for me that's a movement break and i'll set up my day in stages that we're all now working from home and you know we've been doing this for a while but like i kind of look at the body like a a pond of water right if you've got a pond of water that's got a flow going through it this it's it's clean it's pristine it's you know it's got life and a bit of vibrance to it if we've no movement in that water it's that green algae stanky water we don't it's not very attractive right it's not moving very well it's whatever that's the same way as a look at the body that if we can add in that little bit of movement now it's, it's far more vibrant there's far more life to the whole thing as well and for me this is my movement breaks that i'm just going out and grabbing the rope and i'm doing five minutes and then i'm back into work my head's better i'm clearer i'm not getting bogged into emails i'm if i have a stressful call or an email or something i've dealt with I go out, I forget about it, and I come back in and I'm fresh again, as opposed to next, send, next, send, right? And it's a, it's something that's massively overlooked. And uh, that's something I do with a lot of clients is it's the, like the Pomodoro technique where you do 20, 30 minutes and five minutes movement in between. And again, people associate exercise with going to the gym for an hour or having to strip back their day for an hour, an hour, an hour. It's like if you do that, you know, with five, 10 minute breaks on the hour, it's absolutely vital and it adds up so much throughout the day to that 20 to 40 minutes, which is up to the 150 to 30 that's recommended from the World Health Organization. So, you know, these things, if we can break them down into smaller bite-sized chunks, it's now far more doable, it's far easier. By all means, you know, I'm not saying regress your exercise if you're training super hard to just skip it on a rope for five, for five minutes and it's sufficient, but people who are at the lower uh, stages of their journey need to realize that you can break it down. You don't have to go jumping into super super long extensive workouts where it's no pain no gain and you know all sweat and fury with it peel it back go right back to the basics and it's it's again just it adds so much value and now it's, it's crossing over into all the rest of the foundations that if you're doing again exercise you enjoy as opposed to exercise you don't enjoy now adherence goes up as well because it's it's all factoring into again the foundations that are holding up the pillars of fat loss from that point and folks, if you are getting into skipping, it's become really popular. Have a look at Lauren Jumps on Instagram. I found her about uh, about three weeks ago, I think. And the whole Instagram account is all about her skipping. That She found skipping at the start of the lockdown. And she's doing the maddest combinations. It's, it's full Rocky Balboa stuff. It's amazing. Uh, she's very impressive. I was, I was 50% inspired, 50% completely demotivated. <laughs> oh, she, she's incredible. She's like a ballerina with a skipping rope. It's unbelievable. So if you are taking up skipping, do have a look at that. Uh, I haven't uh, mastered any of her stuff yet, but I am going to try. Okay, number number five, mental well-being. So this is crucial too. And again, it surprised a lot of people, but your head is where a lot of your wellness journey or fat loss journey will start. I'm going to preface this and stay in my lane, right? And trainers need to understand this. And I said this to Neve on a podcast I had her on recently as well. I've had my appendix out, but I'm not a surgeon, okay? So it's like, if people have, have had their thing with mental health, you know, we need to understand and appreciate that. And let the professionals do their work with that from that point. But we've got absolute control over, you know, everything we do. And, you know, I'll, I'll say to people that, you know, if, if social media is stressing them out and they say, oh, just, it, it infuriates me. And I'm like, okay, that iPhone that you spent a thousand euros on that you downloaded that app onto that you follow those people with and you're blaming them. And I'm like, you know, okay, let's pull back to control and actually audit your stuff a little bit. Um, and I'm not saying again, remove everything. Of course, you know, you should look at all these things, but it's, it's, it's knowing your environment, knowing the triggers and knowing that exposure. And this is where um, it, it can be crucial and people can really pull it back in and, you know, people that might be struggling because we've got a little bit more time on our hands now. We've got a little bit more, like, and I'm, I'm sure you've seen it as well, social media usage is going through the roof now at the moment, right? Especially through pandemic times. And it's, there's pros and cons. I'm not saying there's, it's all negatives to social media whatsoever. It's allowing us to stay connected. It's allowing us to stay aware of what's going on, but also it's given us more time to scroll through some of the junk that we need to remove. And this is where I was saying before we can add in the meditation, before we add in all those other activities and exercises and you know, even addressing your food or addressing anything, address the stress, what's actually happening there from that point of view and, and how much you can really remove from it. 
because again the more you can remove then down the line you can add in that little bit more you can tolerate that bit more right so from that point with you know it's environment it's what you're exposing yourself to it's what you're consuming um from that point of view more so with your mind than your mouth can make a massive uh, matter from that difference right um Something that's really big and, and it's a huge, uh, just to, to go on with that with social media is the whole community aspect, right? And and this is where either with our affiliate coaching or with Operation Transformation or whatever and all these other elements, even though interaction with people now has been reduced massively in person, interaction online has increased huge. And this is where having that social community, having that social outlet, having that group of like-minded others, because we're in our bubbles now at the moment and you may have been removed from that element of having those like-minded others and this is where having that support group having that community having that tribe for the want of a better word with it allows you to flourish and it can really uh, support your mental well-being from that point of view as well and I'm, I'm sure you've seen that and it's been absolutely crucial over the, the last year with the challenges too yeah surround yourself with people who make you better and who make you healthier and you know and it's a great way to look at that now you know in terms of where you spend your time online who you talk to online what groups or forums or if it's facebook or instagram whatever surrounding yourself with the right people who help you to go forward and achieve the goals that you're looking for the final uh, foundation we're looking for is probably the one everyone thought we were going to start with which is food and fuel yeah so i mean everyone thinks again when they think food and fuel for fat loss that it's just salads and it's just uh the the rabbit food right and i'm not saying it's all pizza beer and burgers but like you have to be able to factor that in you have to have real life and it, it's something i'll look at with people to say how has the last you know four or five months gone in terms of what's happened already this year even though we're in lockdown we've had you know if we go through all the big events and days you've had easter you've had mother's day you've had uh, valentine's you've had all these other events right now we're going to lead up towards may bank holidays due bank holidays all these other days we have to be able to factor those in because this is part of the long road. It's part of the long journey. It's not a six week quick fix because even if you do something over a rapid transformation in six weeks, you're probably going to find that there is an event or some social outlet as well that you, you will need to go to or, or be involved with. There's birthdays, there's, you know, anniversaries, all these things are going to pop up all the time. So it's learning to be able to incorporate that um, into your intake, into your food, but also looking at food as fuel, as opposed to food as the enemy, because we need to fuel performance and like even if we move away from the exercise element you're fueling life you're fueling being a mother being a father being a colleague being a you know a partner a friend whatever it is that we need this energy on a day-to-day -day basis as humans to actually function let alone add in all the extra tiers of exercise and output and you know whatever we want to do from that front so this is where it's, it's absolutely crucial I'm not saying remotely that we all need to take out my fitness pal and start tracking. Personally, I've used it four days in my whole life. Uh, it's, it's one of my great achievements, I think, not having to rely on something like this. But it's creating an awareness around your food. It's creating a mindfulness approach around your food. It's creating that, is this food I like? And is this food that likes me? And it's a really key element to it that, you know, I could tell you to go have tuna salads and sweet potatoes all day long and whatever it might be but you're like well i don't like that again your adherence goes down so how can we increase the adherence is that a case of adding in an extra bar of chocolate per day is it a, a case of having you know looking at your food and saying could we have date night this week could we have you know taco thursdays with the kids whatever it might be that you're now incorporating your health and fitness into their life as well as opposed to being excluded because this is something when people go on plan, they exclude themselves massively. They remove themselves from normality. They remove themselves from their environment and the social return that you get from having food with loved ones and partners. And this is where being able to incorporate it in is absolutely vital. And then you've got the other element of it, like supporting your immune system, right? That's really, really key. And we, we look at this as a complete U-turn on it, but now you've got hair, skin, nails. If you look at every beauty product that's on the market, it's now enriched with aminos. It's enriched with all these vitamins and nutrients and minerals. Why not eat them as opposed to paying a fortune for everything else, right? And, and there's such a, a broad spectrum to the whole thing. But again, if it's not a case that you're increasing adherence, you don't increase the return on investment. If there's one word that we chat about all the way through, it's balance. No matter what foundation we look at, it's a balanced, long-term, healthy approach. 
which is brilliant to hear, and some great nuggets and content. If people want to find out more about you, give us all your work. Where, where can they find you? Where can they listen to the podcast? Um, over on IG, I'm pretty busy. Uh, so you'll find me at Larry underscore Doyle underscore coaching uh, or Larry Doyle coaching dot IE. And uh, the podcast is the Gem Pop podcast. And uh, it's it's we've had some cool guests on there as well. So there's some great chats to be caught up on there too. Larry, it's been great to catch up. We haven't met before. I've been really looking forward to getting you on. And thank you so much for your content, your tips and all the work that you do. I'm a big follower on Instagram. So fair play to you. Well done. Folks, I really hope you enjoyed today's show with Larry Doyle. Simple tips for fat loss. Those foundations Look at your foundations and see where you're at. As ever, we're back next week with more Real Health. You know where we are, at Carl Henry PT on Twitter and on Instagram, realhealthatindependent.ie. And if you like what you heard, don't forget to rate and review, and we'll see you next week. So long ago. Leia Healthcare. It's good to live. Proud sponsor of the Real Health Podcast with Carl Henry.